Thanks for stopping by. If you're new to my channel, I'd like to preface this video by saying it is not a knitting tutorial, but a means to have something playing in the background while you work on your own knitting project. If you're like me and really enjoy YouTube, you find that a lot of the content you like to watch is very visually engaging and you're several hours in and haven't gotten nearly as far into your knitting project as you would have liked. So that's where I come in. So in today's episode, we are going to continue with the series of the Knit Ahead for the Holidays, in which I push myself to continue on with any projects I have that need to be completed before the holiday season and to make sure that they're done so I can ship them off to my friends and family. So we are revisiting the color block cowl from the Knit Calm or Knit Yourself Calm book, and it is right here with me. Right here. So this is the Knit Yourself Calm book, and I will have the publisher's information as well as the ISBN and the description box, and I'll also include the links to the yarn that I'm using today. And from yesterday's video, uh, which was what day was yesterday? Tuesday. Um, I did film and I got a little bit further into the project, but today I was editing that video and decided to continue as far as I could so that I would have a new video to shoot for you today. And I really wanted to get to the point where I was changing colors. So this pattern, actually I'll show you what the finished product should look like. Right here. You can see it's a three color uh, pattern and it's knit with DK yarn and my color scheme, which I showed you guys in the very first video of this particular project is blue, gray, and like a mauvey, a muted like dusty rose kind of color. And now I am finally to the part where I have been able to color change. So I started with my blue and now I'm here in the gray area <laughs> kind of funny. Um, but I am now going to knit 10 rounds and then do a repeat. So I have my regular old stitch counter here. Um, I did purchase a new one and I had displayed that during my yarn curl and stitch con haul slash show and tell video that I uploaded uh, very recently. And uh, this one's just going to be for home now, and that one's going to be for travel. And since I am home, I'm just going to keep using this one. So I'm starting with round one of knit. And if the doorbell rings, I'm expecting a delivery from FedEx. My chewy order should be here. If you guys haven't, do you have pets? And oh my gosh, I just dropped my yarn. That's why I had my projects back here. So I had to open this one from the outside because I couldn't find if there was a center pull. And because it's kind of wispy and dainty, it's very easy to just like fly away somewhere. So I'm trying to keep it contained without causing too much of a tangled mess. And by the way, uh, those pins that I was showing you guys in the yarn haul, I put them them on my project bag now. So I have this one that I got from Knit Fix, and now I have these two that I got at uh, shop number five of the yarn crawl. So they're very cute. And in that video, I have the link to the, the product if, if it's something up your alley. So um, where was it? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I'm expecting a FedEx delivery of Chewy.com stuff. I get my cat litter, I get my cat food from them, and I just have it on auto delivery, but I use a lot more cat litter than I do food, and I use yesterday's news as my litter, and I just placed an order yesterday, or the day before, actually, and it's already on its way, so they have really good shipping. If you buy a lot of pet food, I would say check them out and see if their selection and prices are good for you because I've been using uh, Chewy.com for most, almost 99% uh, of my pet goods since like 2012 when I got my first kitty, Kokuo, who has since passed away three years ago. But um, once I adopted him, I just started using their service and I haven't had any issues. And since I'm in my living room today because it's hot, I had the AC running and I was able to turn that off while I 
shoot this video. So there's a little bit of an echo because there's not much furniture down here. And because I am having a conversation, technically by myself, my cats sometimes get freaked out if I'm not directly addressing them. So especially Ko uh, Koji, who's like over here by the open window, he might decide to, yep, there he goes. <laughs> He'll, he'll usually chime in here or there if I'm down here, and he might even join us again. I'm hoping maybe Kabu wants to say hello this time because uh, she hasn't been featured in a video yet. But, um, yeah, so if FedEx does come, they might ring the doorbell and just drop the package off, and if they do, that's fine. I can just keep filming. Thankfully, I live in a neighborhood that nobody wants my cat litter. <laughs> um, so... It should be fine at the doorstep, at least until I'm done filming and I can drag it inside. So, yes, I have the AC running. Um, if there's any wor worrying noise, it's the fan from my computer because it is currently rendering the video that will be uploaded before this one where I am working on this project. But just, um, oh my gosh, he seriously... All right, I'm going to stop... <laughs> Uh, Koji's decided that it's a bathroom break and the litter boxes are right over there, so it'll be a lot of scratching noise, so I'm just going to stop the video. <laughs> Alright, we're back. Um, he may, so usually <laughs> he went number two and usually he'll go in one box, do number two, go in the other box, and then do number one. So I have a feeling he's going to do something else, um, but if he does, I'll just cut the video again and continue on. But uh, you guys are lucky you don't have to sit in here and smell that. <laughs> he, he always picks the weirdest times. It's never like a set schedule. And it's almost like he and my uh, previous cat, Kokuo, decide to like go number two when there's either company in the room, when you're getting ready to have a dinner at the table, or... Like right now, while I'm in the middle of filming a video. <laughs> they, they just have that that sense, I guess, to disturb something. But, and then, of course, they always dig to China afterwards. So do you have cats, and are they like that, where they just make a stink and then keep digging, digging, digging? <laughs> and it never matters. Whatever litter I had used with him, he would always do that must be a cat thing. Um, thankfully, there aren't any predators for him to worry about, but I know it's instinct to make sure you don't stink, <laughs> literally. Um, so moving on, yes, actually while he was handling his business, I am now, uh, the video has converted in my editing software, uh, the one that I'm, that I'm uploading before this one, so it is currently in the queue in YouTube. So as I work on this, it's just rendering online and um, it will be up shortly. So this will be coming to you from the future, I guess, uh, when I have that ready. Oh my gosh, is he serious right now? He is dead serious right now. He's really going to go and, and do his thing. All right, so uh, we'll come back. <laughs> okay, I think he's done now. I'm keeping my eye on him, though. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, now what was I? I just completely lost all my train of thought because I was so fixated on him being in the litter box. But it'll be nice to get a new delivery of litter. I go through, I mean, I have two cats. It's paper-based litter, so I go through quite a bit of it because it doesn't clump, so you just have to take all of the soil bits out, and that's kind of messy, but I'd rather use recycled newspaper than clay. Uh, but, you know, to each their own, whatever works for you and your cat, but that's what I prefer. And now he's instant. Oh, no. Okay, now he's licking his sister on the head, so usually she doesn't like that, so... <laughs> We'll see if he's trying to get her into, like, chase mode, because he'll, he'll kind of, like, push her buttons a little bit if he feels like playing, and then she'll chase him around and all that stuff, so. She always wins. Almost always. And he's, like, 
twice her size and he'll just like blah like he'll roll on his tummy and he'll say like I give I give and then she'll just be like that's what I thought so it's it's funny when they play and stuff because he's a big softy all right so I've made it to the end of my first round of knitting 10 rounds and I have my cute little stitch marker here so I'll go ahead and mark that one. So nine more to go. I don't like the way he's looking at me. Cause I'm not, honestly, if he tries to jump in my lap now, I'm not going to let him because he just stepped in litter and I don't, I don't like that. We, we have a saying here, we call them litter paws. So if he has used the litter box, we usually just make sure he doesn't jump on the bed. We make sure uh, the couch covers over so he's not tracking matter all over the places that we like to sit. Um, and that'll, we just call them litter pods. It goes for Kabu too, my girl. Like any of them, if they go in the litter box, then we don't want them touching things or our bodies. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, going back in. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> I don't get it. I'm trying to have a nice video session with you guys in my own living room and this little rascal just is like fixated on the litter box this afternoon. But uh, carrying on, <laughs> hoping that wasn't going to be my topic of discussion this uh, afternoon, but it is. So um, anyway, was I going to, I had a specific subject I was going to talk about today. Oh yes, um, realist, oh my goodness, <laughs> I'm going to rip my hair out, hold on a moment. He must be having, I don't know, he definitely relieved himself, but he is, he just keeps going back in there and nothing's coming out, and he's actually not even going, he's just kind of pawing around, I'm like, yeah, you made it stinky in there, and... That's what happens when you use the litter box. So it's, he's a weird one. He's our special guy, for sure. Um, but I was going to say, I, my topic of the day was going to be real estate because I get notices from, like, Redfin and a couple other, like, uh, home ownership uh, search engines, and it's just kind of fun for me. I always fantasize about where I will live, where is my permanent residence going to be, and I love looking at houses and apartments and things like that. Um, I've moved a lot, and actually one of my things I'm supposed to do this on my vacation was to send my partner a list of all the places we've lived together, because um, they were going to update some information for a subscription service they had, uh, and the last time that they had told their new address was like uh, back in like 2013 or so and we have obviously we've moved several times since then and I was like you really didn't update your information since then and so I was surprised because me being me that's just something I automatically do every time I move I update my billing info I update my uh, loan information so they know like who are my addresses and uh, the mailing address my driver's license all that stuff so it's just kind of like clockwork like those are the things you do but um, my partner isn't always as um, diligent about that kind of stuff and it kind of worries me but that's why I'm here to help them out and um, they text me in a panic like hey where did you live in uh, 20 13 and I was like well what part of 2013 because we usually move in the middle of the year during the summertime you know when our lease is up and I was like well the first part of 2013 the last part because there are a couple uh, addresses there and I finally like figured out the information they needed and gave them our address they're like yeah perfect perfect so I was like um they asked if I could send them a list of all the places we've lived and I said sure and that was a week ago, so part of my 
to do on my vacation is a little bit of legwork to just to compile a document. Like I usually keep my forwarding address information and I have I have all the leases um, in my file folder of like personal information, but just to, to give them a document, like a shared Google document or something like that, so uh, it can be updated and accessed at will. So we'll see. I also do that for like when I work, my job history, I always keep um, track of my start date, my end date, who my supervisor was, the address of where I worked, how long I was there, my beginning salary, and my ending salary. So that like if I do apply for a job and they need like specific salary information or they just want to, just for my own records, like who I worked for, the address and all that, I just, I just have a document, an ongoing document where I update it every time uh, something changes. So if you don't, you might want to do that too in case you plan on switching careers or moving a lot. But overall, we have moved quite a bit and I think we will continue to move until one of us pays down enough of our loans where our debt to income ratio for our like student loan debt versus your, your income you make. Um, is low enough that you qualify for a home loan. And in my state, even if I can participate in like a first time homeowner um, programs, I still have to have my um, amortized loan payment history and most of my, my, at least my federal loans are income based because I have other loans that are private that I took out for graduate or undergrad and graduate school and you know those are expensive going to the private school or self-sustaining program uh, that adds up and if you didn't have any uh, grants or scholarships or uh, a very cushy college fund like I did not then you took out a lot of loans to cover your housing and tuition and you know, just your daily living expenses and stuff like that. So I, I have a lot of student loan debt, and that's really, I'm sure this is one of those woe is me, tiny violin kind of stories, but it, it is actually something I would like to do is to have my own property. I don't need a house. Like, I like living in a townhome like I live now. Like, it's the perfect mix. Um... There's yard care, there's yard care, there's yard care. Um, I'm not entirely responsible for all of the exterior upkeep because there will be HOA fees and that covers like your roof and exterior things, snow removal, depending on where you live. But the places I've been looking at are definitely in that realm where you pay your HOA dues and that covers like all exterior stuff and you're just responsible for the interior. Um, and, you know, just having a place where I know it's stable, I have to worry about my mortgage, but that's a fixed um, price. I just have to worry about property taxes, which could go up, and your HOA fees, which may or may not go up, depending on, you know, where you live and what your contract and all that. So, you know, it's relatively stable versus rent, where I usually have to move because the rent goes up and it's out of my budget, so I have to find another place that's within my budget. Or, you know, I got crazy neighbors, or um, I have a new job and the one where I live is just too far uh, to commute. And that was a situation where we are now, but I was lucky enough that my job has housing. So at least for the next two years, I can still live very close to where I work. But do I want to? Don't think so. It's kind of like a catch-22 because um, I really like being close to work, but the condition is that I'm also surrounded by either everybody I work with or the people I serve, and I don't have like a 100% separation between work and home life. And that part, especially where I live, is pretty um, annoying, <laughs> you 
you could say like the rent is affordable, which is great, but at the same time, I would like that separation. I like that privacy. And I'm also in an area that isn't um, so, like easy for me to access things, especially because I don't have a car. Um, so my partner and I have to do a lot of coordinating to make sure that, you know, we're getting to the go grocery store. And that's really far away when it used to be just, you know, 10 minute, 20 minute drive, but it was only like a mile away if that, you know, with traffic and, you know, stop and go traffic, you know, it would take a little longer, but it was still relatively close and everything was close by. But here we have to go across town to, to get to a lot of the things that we we use daily and that's a hassle but um, it's kind of like where do I want to be in the next couple of years um, won't be a homeowner yet but I'm getting closer and closer to being able to say I can qualify to become a homeowner or apply for homeownership uh, programs so that I can be a first-time homeowner Yes. Overall, I love looking at real estate. I love looking at very fancy remodeled homes and thinking about all of the cool storage space I could have, like a nice dedicated craft room, a nice room for guests to come and stay over, and a room, not staying there, maybe like a, a rec room slash foster animal room so I can continue or at least pick up fostering cats again because I really like that. Um, but just have space to spread out and I do really like the townhome layout. I would prefer a finished basement. The basement of my home now is not finished so uh, you may have watched another video or two where I talk about how scary it is down there because uh, one, it floods and there is not a sump pump and the lease does say, hey, there's flooding, don't put anything down there, but we have a little bit of storage stuff like our AC units and um, just a couple like tools and things like that, but as far as having it as a living space it is not feasible because of the flooding and the fact that there are a million and one spiders down there and I don't like it down there, but that's where the laundry is. So, have to go down there no matter what to wash clothes. But I would prefer a finished basement in my next home if I do get a townhome again. Um, but also like a dishwasher. I miss a dishwasher. I used to have one at my old place, and it was super convenient. <laughs> Just reminiscing. <laughs> So yeah, I have a few things on my wish list that I would like, but my partner actually wants to live in a tiny home, if you could believe that. Um, they, I will not reveal, but to my left, they literally have like a space station of computers. Like, I have one computer, it's my desktop. Well, I have a laptop, but it's pretty much out of commission. Um, but they have like several monitors, several computers that are doing different things, uh, really big monitors. They hijacked my television to use as a monitor. And before they used to have even more than that. And they downsized, they moved to Texas briefly and got rid of a lot of stuff and then they came back and now they're just adding more and more back to their, their space station, I call it. Um, and it gets hot. So usually, like I turn the AC off so that you guys could hear me, but um, the fans are running on the computer because it's warm down here because all of those computers are generating a lot of heat. So it's typically very toasty in here in the winter time, um, but the fact that they get hot easily and they want a tiny home with computers that generate a lot of heat just doesn't doesn't make sense and they also like to play games like in VR which is virtual reality they have um, a Vive V-I-V-E and um, that requires space to move around and when you're you know interacting with the controllers and the 
uh, motion boxes that you have to mount up somewhere. And my partner has bad knees. I'm just, I'm just spilling all the tea. <laughs> they have bad knees at this point, and they haven't gone to physical therapy yet. And if you live in a tiny home, you generally, I mean, most of them have like a lofted sleeping area. So the fact that they would have to climb up and down, up and down this ladder, and they would have like very little head clearance to kind of crawl into bed. And the older you get, the riggedy you get, the more riggedy you get. And the fact that they're already kind of on this downhill health turn with their joints, I'm like, I don't know if that's going to work out for you. Like, maybe if we have if we are still together at the point where we want to buy a house or have some property and maybe want a tiny home as a shed as like a man cave then sure but i one i don't think i could live in a tiny home because i have two cats and if one is always digging the china and stinking up the place in the litter box like a tiny home is just going to amplify that and all my crafting stuff. I definitely plan to continue to have all my art supplies and work on little projects here and there and of course knit and all of that takes up space so unless we live in like a place that doesn't rain a lot and has pretty mild temperatures where I could safely do stuff like that outside um, and then again I'm not really an outdoors person so I'd have to fight like bugs and things I don't know. I don't know. It's probably just a fantasy, just like a lot of things that, you know, sometimes we think about that never really come true. But I'm not I'm not saying he can't have a tiny home because that's his choice. But I'm saying I don't think I will be joining him in the tiny home. <laughs> At least not to live as a permanent residence. Uh, but then again, maybe by the time it gets to the point where we're able to own a home, there won't be enough land to have anything more than a tiny home, and we'll all be like pod people. So I guess my question to you is, in the comments below, please let me know. Are you a tiny home person? Are you a McMansion person? Are you a town home? Are you a studio apartment? Are you a penthouse in New York City kind of person? Like, what is your ideal home? Like, if you could design or pick any place to live, like, what kind of style house would you choose? Um, and then, do you prefer to rent or own if you had the option to? Some people, it's like, it's just in your means what you can afford. Or like me, I can only afford to rent at this time. Um, and then rent, like, slums. <laughs> um, the nice places are, I don't even after, before taxes, I wouldn't be able to afford, like, on my salary. The, even us together, it would still be really tight. So, you know, the area you live in, you know, determines a lot of that. But what is your dream home? Let me know in the comments. I'd be interested to, to learn what everybody else thinks of as the ideal living. And then, I guess on top of that, are you a countryside person? Are you a big city person? Do you like suburban setting? Like what's your ideal setting for your dream home? I personally, I'm kind of like a, just on the outskirts of the city person. I lived in a couple suburbs that were, um, actually I've only lived in one suburb that was outside of the direct city. And it was just a short ride away, and then a bam, I was in the middle of the downtown area, and I loved that because I still had the quiet of a suburb, but I wasn't, like, totally in a space where I literally had to drive everywhere. Like, public transit was still there, um, there was still a lot of activities, and I was right in town, so it wasn't hard for me to get around. Um, but I do like a little bit of the separation, because I used to live right in the middle of a city, very briefly, um, and it was just even going to work when I worked in the city was just like really a headache, <laughs> dodging the tourists, and tourists are fine, you know, everybody is a tourist at some point, but the fact that like every single day it was just people who were not familiar with the area, 
kind of diddling around and I'm like, I have places to go. Like, I need to go to work. Like, I don't have time for people to walk like five wide and like stop and take pictures of everything. Like, it just didn't fit my way of life. So I liked kind of having that separation and oh, somebody else is, okay, hold on a moment. I. I think that they both decided that today was the day they're both going to like have their bowel movements at the same time or something. I'm like, what? This never happens to me. Like, why are you guys doing this right now? So I think they've they've relieved themselves, hopefully. It's like they know that they're getting fresh litter today or something, and they're like, yay, new bags of litter. Let's just do what all we can to make um our mom's life a little bit more difficult today. Like, don't know. Um, but while I was waiting for Kabu to finish up, I finished my round. So uh, that was the third round. So I have seven more to go. Actually, no. Yes, yes. Net for, t for ten. Great. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. So <sighs> now I even lost my train of thought again. And I don't want to go back over the footage, so we'll just start a new topic for a little bit. And I've already kind of talked for quite a bit, and we had a few cuts, quite a few cuts that I have to uh, stitch together now. <laughs> stitch together, ha <laughs> um, <laughs> But, and I usually try to just shoot in one go, so I only have to cut out the beginning where it's all me, like, getting the camera together, and then the end where I'm, like, reaching the stop the video um, now that I know how to do that and uh, try to do that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, trying to think of what I'm going to do today after I finish talking to you guys. Uh, I do still have my Tempestry project to finish and I haven't actually got pretty far since I last talked with you guys, but I'm not like far, far, far. Uh, further than I thought I would be at this point, and I need to keep going, so I'll probably put this one down for a bit, because I am getting so far in this one, I have a good feeling I'll be able to finish it um, within the month, for sure. If I take it with me when I go see my friend on Sunday, and if I take it with me when I go to my book club the next Sunday, I will be pretty far, and the fact that I won't be able to knit during lunch for the next few days when I get back to work because I'll be training, and the person I'm training um, only has a 30-minute break for lunch, so that means I don't have an hour for lunch. I have 30 minutes like they do because they can't do anything unless they know how to do it, and they won't unless I'm training them, so uh, for a while I will not have a full lunch, and then it'll pick up again during uh, the fall and everything like that, so then I really won't have a full lunch because I'll be hiring and training even more people. Um, this person's just kind of tidying us over until we get to, like, our peak time again. Um, we have another person leaving, so they're going to be the replacement, but I didn't have any folks coming back during the regular season that wanted to, to jump in a little bit earlier or stay longer, so I had to find somebody brand new. And hopefully it all works out. Uh, they seem very excited about the position, so if they are a good fit, um, hopefully I can keep them in through the fall and I won't have to worry about training and hiring a new person, uh, at least an additional person. I'll still have like 10 people that I have to hire and train in a very short time, but for the most part, if the more people who are coming back are at least a little bit familiar with the lay of the land, that'll save me so much time. So I'm really hoping this year is a good one as far as employees go. Um, so let me know in the comments if you have any big plans for knitting up ahead. Um, like this, of course, all my knit ahead for the holidays items are big plans. Um, I still have a blanket that I'm working on that I stopped working on because it got hot. And I almost thought about knitting that one today. Be like, crazy person knits blanket in the middle of the summer. Like, will she die? Find out. Like, some, 
some kind of clickbaity thing like that, but, you know, I was like, I don't even think I want to try to torture myself. I'll just wait until, ooh, I don't know. Because even if I say if I wait until October, that still doesn't give me a lot of time, and I'm not that far. Like, as far as how much yarn I need to use, I'm barely into the second color of a three-color way, um, or three-color block blanket. Uh, so I might have to actually bust that one out dur sometime during this vacation and at least get another ball of yarn on, on, the, on the needles so that I can make some more progress there. Uh, they've got the Tempestry project that I need to finish before October, so that can be mailed out. Um, I have several pairs of socks that I need to knit, and I'm working on one now. So I did, if you guys recall, I did the Ray Light socks, and because I had messed up a bit, I decided to keep them for myself. And I actually have to block those now that I showed everybody the knit block, uh, sock blockers that I bought. Um, so I have to do that. But I'm trying again, and this time I'm knitting a pair for, who am I knitting these for? Not my brother, because he's like a size 11 men's, I think. So these might be for, um, these will probably be for my, no, I already knit something for my uncle. These might be for my partner, because uh, their foot is like a 10, 10 and a half, and that's about the size of the sock I'm knitting. And for my brother, I think I'm going to knit him, um, this worsted weight sock pattern that I have in a different book because it's a quick knit. It's it's not that bad because it's worsted weight. And I knit it once and I messed up the Kitchener stitch so I made them for myself. I kept them as my own and then I also messed up um, picking up the stitches because it's an afterthought feel. So I had some yarn on, uh, I had my stitches on reserve yarn but when I went to pick them up I like messed up one of the stitches and it was kind of weird and then they asked me to uh, make a stitch and I didn't I just kind of like lifted up the yarn from between and knit it instead of um, you have to do something fancy to like twist it around to actually make it a, a loop and I didn't do that because I just thought he just picked it up but not quite <laughs> you don't just pick it up you have to like l run the yarn through it and I didn't do that, so um, there there was like a big gap between the heel and the bendy part of the foot. So yeah, so that was a that was a um, an experience. So the next time I do it, it'll be better, and that'll be for my brother. And I have the yarn for that one. So I don't know why I'm knitting the ones for my partner because he can get those anytime. I need to make sure I get the ones for the holiday gifts because those are the ones that are on a deadline. So, not that I'm kicking anybody to the curb, but even the projects that I want to do for myself have been on the back burner for like a year now because I've been so focused on making sure that I get like the holiday stuff done. So, <sighs> and then I have another blanket I need to start. Um, my former fourth grade teacher. Uh, I did reveal to her that I have a YouTube channel, but uh, so that I don't dox myself or anything, uh, I probably already have, considering all the information I've been sharing with you guys, but to flat out say who she is and who I am, I, when I was writing a letter to her, I did tell her I have a YouTube channel, and I said I wasn't going to tell her what it's called, but if she happened to find it, just not to tell people who I am, um, but... I have been thinking in my head of like what I want to make her because I really want to knit something for her and I thought about this one blanket and it was crochet and I'm like you know what I don't think I want to jump into crochet and just do a full blanket and then mess it up you know so might need to start with some granny squares and then work my way up to a blanket because then I was like all right well now what am I going to do and then um, I found these really cute colors at Joann's and they were having a sale on the Karen brand one pound yarn and it was like 40% off you know a pound of yarn and so I got three of those I might have got four and then decided to use three for the for the blanket so 
I have that sitting on reserve. And since it's worsted weight, it's going to take me a long time to knit it. But I'm trying to think of what kind of pattern I want to do. I kind of want to do like a garter with a slip stitch so it has like this really pretty edge. But we'll see. We'll see. And if it's garter, then it'll knit up quickly. So I don't know. I don't know. Yay, so I'm almost to the end. Let me finish up this round and then we can conclude and take a look at how much progress I've made since we started the video. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna film any more this week because I do just wanna get through some projects to, before I show you guys anything more since it's still kind of inchworming along with a lot of them. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But um, ooh, what do I? All right. So we're at the end of a round. So that I keep my stitch marker from falling off, I'm gonna knit one more because we're still doing the same thing. And I'll get that there. All right. So now. We just finished row four. We're round four. And now we can see, let me get you guys closer here. Oh. So we had our five pearly rows of garter, and now we're on to our knit. So then this part is going to look just like this. And then we'll do the same thing for the dusty rosy mauvey color so you guys might not even see that one honestly because of how quickly this works um by the time i film again with it it might already be done and then it'll be part of the showcase of all of the projects that i was able to do for the holidays after they've been blocked and all pretty full and everything like that before i actually uh, send them off to where they belong um so with that Thank you so much for watching to the end, and if you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. I know you probably hear that a lot with the videos you watch, but thank you to my two subscribers. I really do appreciate you, and I hope that you continue to watch my uploads. Um, and with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.